all right guys hi so we're gonna be doing a video today on the post c-section so it's gonna be daddy's slash rj's view of after she was taken from me so go ahead tell your story go ahead okay well <laughs> hello i'm dad and um, yeah rj whatever ronnie um you're gonna make this so difficult today, huh? Yep. Should you be with mom or do you want to sit like an adult right now? Oh. Is this what you want to do? Well, anyways, like Amanda said, she had a C-section. Um, yeah. She's gonna make this super difficult. Okay. So anyways, Amanda had a C-section, obviously, oh, like she said. Time. I just said that sometimes. Um, do you want to redo this? No, keep going. Okay, well, we're not redoing it, sorry. Take two, we're gonna make this happen. Um, so, in in the operating room, first of all, even before, like, it, me and Amanda are very close, like, we, we do pretty much absolutely everything together. Like, before this moment, literally, in the past three years, we there's only ever been one night that we have been apart. I know it sounds crazy, but it's just how it is. We're, we're like attached at the hip in the best possible way. Um, so I had to wait, like for them to prep Amanda and get her ready, I had to wait and I had to get in my whole little jumpsuit get up gown thing. Amanda showed you guys a picture in her last video. Um, which was, that was hard for me because you know, we really do do everything together and that we pride ourselves on that. It's like pretty special experience to share. But once I was finally able to go in and Amanda was all set up and ready to go and blocking off her stuff and everything so they can, you know, operate. Well, I believe she actually, to be completely honest, when I walked in, she was already like open and they were like working on pulling out Blake. And I know she shared that like, crazy experience with you guys of how they were pushing Blake out because, man, Blake, she just did not want to come out, man. Like she... They opened mom up and they were like, Blake was like, nope, I'm going into your rib cage. So they're pushing her, pushing her. Finally, they pull her out. The nurse grabs her and right away, oh my God, Blake did not like this nurse. Blake it was like, sorry to the nurse, not saying you're a bad lady or anything, but Blake <laughs> absolutely hated this nurse. I mean, it was like right away. She was screaming bloody murder. How dare you, crazy woman who I don't even know, take me away from my mom. Um, and it, the whole experience was just crazy. Blake started screaming right away. She just, she wasn't ready to be out in the world. And she definitely wasn't ready to come out into the world with mom, with like this crazy nurse. Um, so there was a ton of doctors, like doctors and nurses. There must have been like 15 people. It felt like there was 30 people in the room, but there must have been like 15 nurses and doctors just there just to make sure everything went okay. It felt super rushed. So like when I went to cut the umbilical cord, the doctors wanted to take a picture for me, which would have been awesome. But because everything felt so rushed, like they were so, like the concern was, we have to get her to the chalk NICU. Like I just cut the umbilical cord. We didn't even get a picture. Um, it would have been cool, but I'm really not worried about it. Well, that whole event right there, like, the most heartbreaking part was the fact that they took Blake away from Mom, and Blake hated the nurse, so that didn't help. But then, like, they were just like, we're gonna go to the NICU, and I was like, whoa, 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 hold up, like, Mom hasn't even get a touch her, or kiss her, or anything like that, so I'm like, look, guys, I need a picture of Mom and the baby, like, you, you gotta at least give me that. So thankfully, they did. I know Amanda also showed you that picture, amazing, like probably most precious moment uh, of my life, I'll never forget that, that picture was incredible. But then moving forward, you know, they kind of stabilized Blake, wipe her down, she, she was, seeing that it was a C-section, Blake was like super clean and just like perfect, <laughs> it was amazing. Um, yeah, she still is. Mm. Mom says she still is, which I agree <laughs> with that. I agree. Um, after that, we had to go transport. So we we're on the third floor in St. Joseph's Hospital, and we had to go from the third floor all the way down to the basement to a tunnel because St. Joseph's Hospital is sh connected to Chalk Hospital. So we took the tunnel, which is nice. I'm obviously with doctors and nurses, so I have an escort, so I know, like, how, not that I know how to get there, but like, they got me to the NICU with Blake. 
um, which was, it was nice, it was super cool, um, they were, you know, they were stabilizing Blake and everything, I didn't get to, like, touch her or hold her or, like, kiss her or a lot or anything, I really didn't get to do any of that, which obviously as a dad, a new dad is really hard, but the hardest part of that was leaving mom, um, like I said, me and mom are super close, mm -hmm. and, um, so, yeah, obviously, like, some of you guys are, yeah, but you're with your kid, you know, and yes, that, that's true. Babe, I'm trying to talk. Um, but, you know, without Amanda, like, it wasn't possible. So, it was, like, all you dads out here that are watching this video and, you know, congenital heart disease or whatever the case may be where mom is stuck and she has to stay in recovery, baby's being taken away. Um, that's the hardest part for sure is just leaving your wife and you know yes it's great that you're able to be there with your kid and for your kid but it's extremely hard to leave your wife especially for me because like I said we do everything together and uh, the one thing I wish I wish I would have been more comfortable with this camera which the camera is amazing I wish I would have filmed the whole experience it was hard because I just had my hands were full of stuff I was trying to make sure Blake was okay but I really wish I would have filmed it for Amanda so it was like like she can watch it and like she would never left but unfortunately we literally just got the camera and it was all new to me but I did take a ton of pictures for her to share obviously with Blake later on in life and also to share with YouTube you guys the experience um so we got to the NICU they're setting up Blake uh, another thing that they did was they were trying to set up an IV and it's funny because Amanda goes to a lot of appointments while I'm at work and you know she's all like um, vaccinations and getting all these shots and I miss it and she's always rubbing in my face like hey you know you don't have to watch her go through this well it's like I told her it's like hey we're just getting even because when she went to the NICU on that first day they must have poked her like 30 times to try and set up an IV she's a heart patient so maybe her circulation isn't the greatest so it was really hard for them to find veins but Blake was a freaking trooper man she not once did she cry in that whole entire time Okay. And then after, so after they finally get the IV set up and everything, they had to sterilize the area because they do like a, a mini operation. They they had to set up a pick line for her, which that's the point that I had to leave. Um, Amanda wants me to kind of like elaborate on what a pick line is, but I think I'm gonna let her do that because she probably has a better explanation than than me. So and so, then I'll finish my story. But she wants you guys to have the information. I mean, you guys are coming here watching these videos for like trunk is congenital heart disease for information so here she is it's pretty much just a, a main line to the heart so you're, be in the you're able to get not only medications easier Bar sorry yeah <laughs> it's just to get medications through easier and be able to access the heart a lot easier instead of just having an IV an IV is like a way smaller smaller not as the pick line, accessible like, the pick as line a pick line. goes through like right it's it's, it's, in your, artery. it's it's in your leg and it goes through an artery like up to your heart yep. so they can like medicine and draw blood and stuff yeah. like that right mm -hmm. yeah so that's the pick line for you anyway so i at that point of course heart and this is like the doctors took some pic some really good pictures of blake for me actually because i was just like there was so much going on people were asking questions trying to answer things <laughs> I was like, yo, if you guys could, just please take some photos for me. They took great ones. Yes, they did. Uh, I got a kid. I took pictures too, guys. Trust me. <laughs> um, but I, the only I hadn't touched her at all at this point, really, to be completely honest. So when they're like, all right, it's time to go. We're sterilizing. We're going to do the operation. That's when I got to kiss her on the forehead. And that was a really special moment. Obviously, this is the first time I touched her. Um, but after that, I had to go upstairs, the first floor of Chalk. For admitting because I had to admit Blake into chalk and I must have been sitting like in the, the lobby for like half an hour waiting for admitting to come out and they never came so I went to the receptionist and said hey you know what's going on like I've been waiting for almost a half an hour finally you know I was cool about it so they really helped me out they contacted the person from admitting finally admitting came out and this lady man was like a drill ser sergeant asking for a wife's birthday um you know social security and you know shoot oh my god i like i was like i had to think about her birthday just because so much was going on she's like what you don't know your wife's birthday i'm like dang lady like chill out you know like i just kind of went through a lot right now i know her birthday trust me but relax um and so obviously like i was a little flustered because i obviously i left my wife and she's still recovering 
and you know I just wanted to get back to her to let her know how Blake was doing and to have to wait 30 minutes is just like it really frustrating but I did my best to keep my cool and get the information and also like we told them that Blake Page was going to be her name was going to be Blake Page which was funny because the whole month that Blake Page was at the hospital she was baby girl not Blake Page <laughs> So we all had this thing going, it was BG Booty. Yeah, BG Booty. But, um, BG Booty. After that, after finally all the admitting stuff was done, I went back down to the basement to the tunnel to go back to the St. Joseph's Hospital. And of course, hospital, I get lost. So I somehow I ended up in like the employee entrance, which is on the completely opposite side of the hospital. And I had to, I was like, you know what, screw this. I've, I've already been away for like, um, it felt like probably close to two hours. Uh, so I just went outside and I ran all the way around the hospital to the other side so I can meet with Amanda, make sure she was doing okay, and let her know that Blake was a freaking trooper. She was doing great. Um, she got plucked in the hand 30,000 times and she didn't cry one peep and make sure that Amanda was okay. Now that's pretty much like right after delivery that that's the story yeah and as you can see she's freaking adorable and she has her two cents in this video as well she wants you guys to know she's like i don't like this story guys <laughs> but, i was comfy in there yeah that, that's it but anyways thank you for watching and i you hope you me. enjoyed dad's side of the story there's definitely more to come we want to do her whole and story like, like come on baby she's gonna close out the video for you guys <laughs> hey tell them like it is kid <laughs> all right thanks guys that's it guys bye bye